Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Efeni. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning. Good morning, Rufa. Good morning, sir. Yes, yeah, still missing Tundu MQ Abiola. Yeah. Yes. Um, we start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. Well, we start from the window story where Buhari wife writes of Bagbane as funeral rites of Disney publisher's mother begin. Yes, Emma of Kano visits our kingdom to condole Obagbena's family. Says Undoka Obagbena is the greatest Nigerian he has met. Yes, the funeral of the late princess Margaret Obagbena, matriarch of the Obagbena family, uh, started. And yesterday, the Emir of Kano was in our land, Owa, uh, to pay his condolences to not just the Obagbana family, but the entire uh, Owa kingdom. And of course, the photograph is right there on the front page, page of this day. Of course, some of us will be heading for the airport after this program on our way to Delta State, where the funeral uh, is taking place. Now, the lead story of this day, oil theft, arrest of three million barrel capacity super tanker reflects scale of crisis. Navy confirms chasing suspicious vessel into Equatorial Guinea. Says crude oil ship feigned attack by sea pirates, 16 Indians, eight Sri Lankans, one Pole, Filipino found aboard facility. Yes. Up till now, it's been like fiction when you say Nigeria loses as much as 80% of the production, mm. as once quoted by the chairman of his um, uh, yes, holdings, yes. Uh, Mr. Tony Lumelu. It was as if he was uh, talking fiction. But this um, it's an evidence that indeed what we're talking about, Ruben and Rufai, we're not talking of petty thieves mm -hmm. or artisanal uh, mm -hmm. uh, refiners yes. whom the Navy bomb at will. And many have said, why don't you bring these boys together, organize them into proper modular refining. But here we have the big thieves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Business Day new, uh, newspaper broke the story yesterday, which I reviewed in the afternoon. And I was asking the question, where were the Nigerian Navy? Because this arrest was done in Equatorial Guinea. It takes almost a month to fill this tanker. Mm -hmm. It's a super tanker. Hmm. This super tanker going through Nigerian waters in Nigerian territory. Filling a super tanker with stolen crude. And we have naval personnel all around the place. We have military men, police in the Niger Delta. Yet they all miss this. Now they're saying, in fact, the Nigerian Navy chased this vessel into Equatorial Guinea. Because I was asking the questions yesterday. How come Equatorial Guinea now has a more efficient navy than the giant of Africa, big Nigeria? But we are now being told by the navy now we are told that, oh, we chase them into Equatorial Guinea. Perhaps if the Equatorial Guineans were not that efficient, the guys would have just gone into the high seas, international waters, and Voila, gone with as much as 300, no, 3 million barrels of crude. You calculate that. That's about, about $300 million worth of crude. Living Nigeria. Yeah, $300 million. Now we have this, um, at least they've been arrested somewhere. And uh, what follows will head through. Hmm. Who are the persons behind this. 
Because yes, those on board are non-Nigerians going by this list here, yeah, Indians, Sri Lankans, one pole, Filipino, who are their collaborators in Nigeria. The last time the United Arab Emirates gave Nigeria a list of those who are sponsoring terrorism in Nigeria, having jailed some of them in UAE. As we speak, we don't know those names. Nobody has brought them to book. We hope this arrest will not go the same way. Because a country that is so blessed and being bled in this fashion, and Nigerians are suffering. Imagine the amount involved. <laughs> if you sell that and keep that, that will solve us a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but let's just look at other stories and before I come to you quickly. Uh, the Guardian newspaper, experts tax Buhari governors on how to rescue alien economy. Inflation rate ballooned by 170% under Buhari in seven years. That's what the Guardian is reporting. Why government must embark on urgent sweeping reform. President, governors must agree on PMS subsidy removal timelines. Focus must focus more on agree sector insecurity to stem food inflation, the federal government told. Of course, that seemed to be a no-brainer. Now, the New Telegraph newspaper, another sad part of our economic management, yes. Federal government to spend $6.71 on fuel subsidy in 2023, calculated at, one, at 15 naira per liter, says payment stood at 1.33 trillion in 2020 budget 1.5 trillion in 2021 fiscal year that is how we spend our hard earned resources subsidizing a petroleum product it has been stated over time hope that this government has to do something but of course president buari has confirmed to Nigerians that that will not happen on, under his watch. The can has been kicked to May 2023, um, after Buhari will have left office. Mm. Perhaps um, we are running against time, right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, just the Punch newspaper, another sad part of our economy. Um, if I, endless borrowing, debt servicing gulps, 13.17 trillion under Buhari, education suffers. Mm. So you know why? ASU has been on strike, yes, intransigence, obstinacy. I uh, will use such words sometimes on ASU, but if we have a very serious government, uh, they won't allow this to linger. Mm -hmm. Ruben Rufai. I know okay. we don't have so much time. I mean, we're... Um, okay. okay, go ahead. Okay, what else can I say? It's obvious. We are killing our future by ourselves. But let's talk solutions. Some solutions will be, we need to even rethink education in the first place. Now that it's obvious that government doesn't have money, they can't put the money in, what can we do with the universities? Can we make them more autonomous? Can we make allowance for part-time people so we can get more revenue coming into schools? Can we also look the way of endowments? Can we look at the way we pay it? Can we have scholarships for people to be able to go to school? Because we need to be honest with ourselves. If the government says they don't have the money any longer, we still need to make these universities run in tandem with international realities. The biggest universities in the world have been run through endowment funds. But will you not be too simplistic to just accept hook, line, and sinker governments say we don't have money? Any serious government will find money for education. But we are borrowing. But, but I'm borrowing. Mm -hmm. And the chairman of PD, uh, APC said, Buhari is going to borrow till eternity, except that Buhari has terminal, his administration has terminal but, date, but, not but eternity. The, but the truth is, since we cannot we have, borrow to fund education. Since we have seen this level of unseriousness, okay. 
which is all evident because nobody can tell us otherwise. It's crystal clear. Then what do we do to save the educational sector? So I'm looking at solutions. We've romanticized the problem. We know the problem. We know, we know it's because of unseriousness. I didn't say minister. I mean, didn't say a former Qatar general is still 108 billion or thereabout now that he's put, look, looking for plea bargain. If that money was plowed to ASU, I'm sure ASU will not be on strike. How much billion was given to ASU the last time that they called on the strike? So since we have seen this level of unseriousness, how can we think beyond? Because we now need to start thinking beyond. Can't we call for more seriousness? Ah. Be calling for let, it, too. Let me, Let's yeah. see who we answer you. The, the education sector. <laughs> Nigeria, in the last six years, according to some analysis that was done in today's uh, edition of Punch, has spent over 13.7 trillion naira just servicing debt. Okay? That's it. That's it. Right there on the screen. And we have sectors like education suffering. The experts who know this subject say that, look, to even fund education in this country, just about 7.8%, the highest since this administration has zoomed office, and that it's not just this administration, successive administrations, previous administrations have also been uh, accused of guilt in this regard. Underfunding education. Yes, so you are mortgaging the future, as we have argued. And if you are spending over 16 trillion just to fund public debt and uh, external debt, then, of course, you have issues. The standard argument by uh, government is that, oh, Nigeria has a revenue problem. But you won't get that revenue by taxing people more. And we have revenue problem. We are, we are also faced with a front page story in this day about crude oil theft. Big time. Which is a serious matter. Big time oil this theft year alone, going on. We've been told that uh, we've lost over 4 trillion naira to oil, uh, crude oil uh, theft. And then also, you have uh, the persons who got OML, OMLS, OMLs, you know, are saying that it is not profitable because half of the available crude is stolen. In this particular case, a super tanker was, uh, you know, uh, intercepted by NNS, NNS uh, Gungula, that's the Nigerian Navy, acting on, uh, on intelligence from the authorities in Equatorial Guinea, cutting away about $300 million worth of uh, crude oil. Intelligence from Equatorial Guinea. Stolen over a period of one month at the rate of about 100,000 barrels per day. Hmm. And nobody could, uh, you know, uh, identify that uh, until the uh, tanker set sail. And who are the people on this vessel? 16 Indians, six uh, Sri Lankans. Sri Lankans who cannot uh, sort out their own country. They are coming to Nigeria to come and steal our crude oil. Ruben, and, yes. For a super tanker to be in Nigerian territory for one month, for one month. loading oil. So, one million every day. I I think think that, and you are, you are attacking Sri Lankans. Ordinary. No, the people there are Indians, Sri Lankans. Who is feeding the crew? Filipinos. Those are just uh, sailors. Look so, at the distance. The they, they came here to steal crude oil. Uh, Who is feeding the crew? Who is servicing the ship? So, I think the president must see this as an opportunity to go beyond just saying we have to address this problem. We must share intelligence with neighboring countries. We must do what it takes to deploy technology. Because there is no way somebody will come from Sri Lanka, where they don't even have a fuel, to come and steal crude oil from uh, Nigeria. Human connivance. Yes, there must be collusion. In Nigeria. Anyway, thank Not you. Not in Sri Lanka. Uh, thank you very much, Emmanuel. <laughs>